Hello, my name's Andrew Barber, and I'm going to read to you a book I wrote called The Hog Island Sheep in a Twisted Christmas Tale. A long time ago on Virginia's eastern shore, so long ago only your wrinkliest relatives might remember, there lived a little orphan girl. Her name was Amanda, and she lived in the almshouse, a home that gave shelter to poor people who had nowhere else to go. Although the almshouse fed her and gave her a bed to sleep in, life was very, very hard. The children had almost no toys to play with, and winter nights were freezing. Amanda decided to make some changes. She wrote a letter to Santa. Dear Santa, for Christmas, please bring warm blankets for our beds and some dolls to play with. Because of the cold, I'll probably be awake when you arrive. I hope the noise of my knees knocking doesn't scare your reindeer. Love, Amanda. Amanda sealed her letter in an envelope and addressed it, Santa Claus, North Pole. After Shinkatee, just keep going. Suddenly, a strange look crossed her face and she burst into tears. She didn't have money for a stamp. But her tears didn't last long. You see, Amanda wasn't one of those children who whine and pout. She was made of sterner stuff. She wiped her face and started to think. That afternoon, she accompanied the cook to the harbor at Willis Wharf to buy bushels of clams and oysters. Shellfish was cheap back then, and the residents of the almshouse often ate them in soups, stews, and fritters. When no one was looking, Amanda crept down to the dock. From her pocket, she pulled a bottle that she had found behind the almshouse. She placed her letter inside and sealed it with a cork. She looked out over the channel at the expanse of salt grass. Then, with all her might, she hurled the bottle into the water and watched as the tide carried it toward the sea. Amanda knew the chances of the bottle reaching Santa were slim. The bottle would have to find its way past the barrier islands, Islands with names such as Wreck and Mockhorn, Hog and Cobb, that stood between the eastern shore and the Atlantic Ocean. Even then, the bottle would have to bob all the way to the North Pole, dodging icebergs, polar bears, and abominable snowmen. Amanda sighed and walked back to the clamshed. That night, not five miles offshore, a meeting was underway on Hog Island. A flock of 200 sheep was gathered on the beach around a bonfire. In front of the woolly assembly, on a driftwood log, sat two big rams. I don't know about you lot, said one of the rams, but I am sick and tired of being named after pigs. Hog Island sheep indeed. My ancestors came here from England in the 18th century, and I won't play second fiddle to swine. I'm a sheep, and this should be Sheep Island. Excited bleating erupted from the crowd. Hank, replied Vernon, a distinguished ram with mutton chop whiskers. No one really knows of Hog Island got its name from pigs that shipwrecked here. It might just be an old yarn. Of course they wrecked, shouted Hank. Pigs are sloppy sailors, couldn't find their way off the poop deck. Pink land blubbers, that's what they are. Vernon ignored him. The island's name may have nothing to do with pigs, he said. Hog may be short for quahog. It's an Indian word for clam. The millions around here. I'm not taking a back seat to a bivalve, steamed Hank. He jumped from the log and started to chant. This island is for lambs, not for clams. This island is for rams, not for hams. As sheep tend to do, the whole flock was soon chanting the slogan. Just then, a small lamb came gambling up from the beach, clutching Amanda's bottle. The sheep gathered around the fire as Vernon withdrew Amanda's letter. Who's Santa? asked the young lamb after Vernon had read the letter aloud. A magical man who delivers gifts on Christmas, answered Vernon. Red suit, kind of paunchy, big white beard, looks a bit like... Although sheep have never been famous for their intellectual agility, you could be forgiven for thinking that a look of pure cunning had stolen across Vernon's face. 
I have an idea, he said. Vernon's plan was simple. At Christmas, the sheep would take Santa's place in bringing blankets and toys to the poor children at the almshouse. Their generosity would become famous throughout the Eastern Shore. They would be heroes. The island residents would fall over themselves in the rush to rename the island in the sheep's honor. As sheep tend to do, the whole flock thought the plan was brilliant. Gunston, the fattest, wooliest sheep on the island, was Vernon's choice for Santa. The sheep sheared off all his wool except for a bushy white beard. Ewes immediately started spinning the wool into yarn, and with the yarn they knitted thick blankets and made dozens of small dolls. All they needed now was a red suit. Hmm. This is what we know. Captain Webb went to bed one night wearing his nightcap and red flannel pajamas, and he woke up the next morning in his birthday suit. If you've ever heard a sheep run across a hot pine floor, you may wonder why the captain didn't hear a thing. Let's just say that he hasn't touched a drop of eggnog since. At last, it was Christmas Eve. As night fell, a strange procession headed to the docks at Hog Island and stole aboard a skipjack. Up went the sails, and the Christmas sheep glided out into the bay. When they arrived on the mainland, Gunston clambered into a farm wagon with the bag of presents. The other sheep tugged and heaved, bleated and barred. Slowly, oh so slowly, the wagon rolled across empty farmland. Finally, they reached the almshouse. All was quiet. On a tottering ladder of sheep, Gunston was hoisted higher and higher until, at last, he reached the top of the towering chimney. He eased himself over the lip of the chimney, his bag slung over his shoulder. And then, before he knew it, Gunston slipped and dropped like a stone into the black hole of the chimney. But he didn't fall to the bottom. He was way too fat. He was stuck, unable to go up, unable to go down. Bah! The sound of Gunston's panicked bleat rang across the frozen countryside and echoed through the almshouse. A moment later, Amanda's worried face looked up the chimney. Santa, is that you? She whispered. Bah! bleated Gunston again. Bah! Humbug, you mean, said Amanda. Look at you, you're all scrooged up. Reaching up, Amanda grabbed Gunston's two hind legs and pulled. Nothing happened. What skinny little legs you have, Santa, exclaimed Amanda. She pulled again. Santa did not budge. Now, as we all know, Amanda was one smart cookie. How many times had she watched the cook twist corks out of bottles in the kitchen? Couldn't she do the same with Santa? Amanda took hold of Gunston's legs again. This time, she twisted as she pulled. A horrified bleat went up from Gunston. She screwed his legs further round and pulled harder. A shower of soot, dust, and bits of brick cascaded down the chimney. But Gunston had moved. Closing her eyes, Amanda gave a final, mighty, twisting tug. And with a great rumbling and cracking, Gunston came hurtling down the chimney. Amanda fell backward into the parlor, followed by a cloud of black dust. In the sooty darkness, Gunston made good his escape. He scrabbled open the front door and shot into the night. As the dust settled inside the almshouse, Amanda looked round to find Santa gone. Sitting in the middle of the room, though, was a bag filled with gifts. As for the old chimney, it was twisted, but still standing. As the stars wheeled overhead, the scene in the almshouse was no different from that in homes across the country. Twas the night before Christmas, 
and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Snug in her blanket, under a full stocking, Amanda slept soundly. Her knees had stopped knocking. Back on Hog Island, the sheep placed a phone call to the local paper to relate their exploits. The editor, a ham-fisted fellow with a pink face, took down all the details. The next day, the sheep gathered to read about the heroism in the Hog Island squealer. Sheep damage brick chimney on mainland? Third little pig reports destruction? That's not what happened. Bah!